so the framework architecture look like this okay uh, in the so in the left side i just mentioned uh, any typical etl project architecture file to branch branch to silver silver to gold again this naming convention will vary project to project or maybe the layers will increase project to project or reduce project to project okay so if this is your project so what we do we create configuration files to compare file data versus table data so this config will contain the information about your source in, uh, source file or target file or maybe source database target database or source table and then target table okay i'll show all this uh, in the demo today uh, how config is created how test file is created how framework is created in some time first let me clarify or let me explain this framework architecture then we'll jump into the live demo class okay so in the config files we keep yml files as a configuration file and then we also use a json file uh, as i mentioned right csv file with header without header json file uh, some tags right uh, and then parquet file or maybe avro file so for all of this we need to provide the schema because we 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 should not do any manual effort okay so we will feed the schema information uh, for your source file and then we read the data for that we are using json files okay? and then you also see the sql so sql is necessary because uh, when we do the etl automation right we need to compare our source data and then target data so if you want to compare source data source in, in the raw format right you need to apply some transformations to apply the transformation we use the sql files sql file so once we have these configuration files so we create test files pytest will accept the test files as uh, as your test cases inside the test files we write the test methods okay so these test methods and then configuration files will be feed to the framework so in the framework we have written uh, like almost 30 40 different uh, data validations and data, data quality check functions so whatever data you are passing so this data will be fed to this uh, framework framework will actually do the necessary reads and necessary validations and then will give us one report or multiple reports uh, for instance uh, i just mentioned here email report with all the failures and then detailed information slack notifications and it can also uh, give us the html report so i just written few here but we can also extend with early reporting or we can also write this output back to some uh, test management tool like x-ray zero and then alm or vs code okay so to make it this uh, uh, training very simple i just written only email and then html report and slack notification but we can extend this reports to some other level okay so this is uh, the framework architecture uh, that i'm going to cover uh, in this training event, okay so now so let me show you uh, one live demo how this framework will work uh, okay? uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll come back and see what topics i'm going to discuss uh, in this study okay so let me close these files okay so let me so this is the framework guys okay? so this is the framework so where we have created a github dot github workflows uh, so these two files are used in the cacd pipeline so where we keep uh, the steps i'm not going uh, to discuss in depth about these files at this moment because we have only one hour slot to explain all the all the things right so maybe i'll cover the cacd everything uh, maybe in our regular classes okay not here so this is the github cacd pipeline files okay and uh, we have the jars files required uh, to read data from the different databases and different uh, cloud platforms so azure storage uh, to read data from the adls account and then you see uh, ms sql is to read data from uh, sql server db postgres jar is used to read data from the postgres snowflake uh, jar is used to read data from the snowflake so so this is the jar folder and uh, we have written src uh, source code under this source code we have written different validations okay so you see count validation data compare duplicate check null value check record only in the source record only in the target schema validation uniqueness check so i have taken only few validations here but i have written around 30 to 40 different uh, validations and data quality check functions okay but to make it this training very simple i just written only uh, six to seven different validation uh, scripts here okay so let me show you one function so this is the count check function so this count check function will take source and targets as input and key columns as a another parameter and then do some validations and return us some output so this is the code for the data count validation so likewise we have written multiple functions okay? this is under src and under the utility we have written some code uh, to uh, generate some reports and then some general libraries okay? and then uh, since we are using pytest uh, 
uh, framework to automate our ETL test cases. So PyTest test cases, we should write under the test folder. So I have, tell, uh, I have created test folder. Under the test folder, uh, we have written multiple table validation files. So if I go back to maybe one of the file, one of the table validation, table 11. So here you can observe uh, config YML, schema JSON, test table 11, transformation SQL. So if I go back to this architecture diagram, so this is the project architecture. We don't need to worry about this project architecture. This will vary project to project. Okay. Our, art, uh, our framework architecture will start from config files. Okay. So config file, YML, JSON, SQL file. You can observe here. For any table, uh, CC, table 11 validation, I have, I have created config YML file, schema JSON, test to table 11.2a, and then transformation.sql. Okay. So if I open this config YML file, in this file, we keep uh, our source target information. So for example, you want to validate file versus file. So we keep source as a uh, file, type as CSV, if it is CSV. If it is JSON, we keep JSON. If it is parquet, we keep parquet. If it is arrow, we keep arrow. Okay, and then we provide schema Y. So the reason we need schema Y, uh, because sometimes, right, when we work on the real ETL projects or big data projects, CSV files, uh, CSV file comes with uh, header without, some, some files with header without header. So uh, some files with, we get header, header will contain some junk characters. So column names will have some uh, extra spaces or maybe column names will have some uh, add the rate symbol or hash symbol, iPhone symbol, all of this, okay? To, uh, to compare target schema, we use uh, schema equal to Y. So if you provide schema equal to Y, we need to provide the schema, okay? So this actually uh, tells, when you are reading the data, this is the file we use to read the data as a schema. So first column name will be considered as identifier, type as this one. So we are explicitly feeding schema while reading your source data. Okay. So likewise, uh, so this is the schema config file. This config file will contain your source, source details, target details. I'll show you file versus GB also. This is file versus file. And then validations. Okay. So in the validations, we keep each validation config. So if you are doing count check, what is the primary key? If you are doing duplicates, what is the primary key? If you are doing null check, what on which column you need to perform null value check? Okay. If you are doing unique check, on which column you want to perform unique check? So data comparison check. What is the key value to compare the data, actual data source minus target target minus source? Yes, clear so far. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah. So once you enroll for this program, right, we'll explain all this framework, everything. Uh, don't worry. But today I just wanted to show you one free demo uh, how the framework is implemented because few of you are reaching to me that how framework is implemented, what topics you used, all these things. So that's why I thought to sir. explain uh, framework implementation. So if you have any uh, questions, right, uh, maybe you can keep that question at the end, but uh, uh, if it is a simple question, we can discuss now. Sir, will you start the framework from the scratch, right? Yes, yes, yes. This is the previous batch uh, framework so, implementation. Uh, so, okay, so uh, you can, uh, as you discuss, actually here are some uh, validations are there. Only five to six validations are there. So will you cover all all thirty validations, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a very difficult to discuss all thirty in the training, but I'll give right, the code right. to all different uh, validations. Okay. I'll give the code. Further, will you discuss, right? Yeah. yeah in yeah. coming classes. Yes. Yes. Okay. So yeah, so this is one configuration file, guys. So likewise for yeah. another table validation, maybe one more table mm -hmm. validation, I create a table tool. Mm -hmm. um, so for this table also, you will see the same structure. Okay, for every table validation, you see config, schema, JSON, table 11. Uh, if you are doing table 11 validation mm -hmm. and then transformation.sql. So right now it is a file to file. We don't need to keep any transformation code. It will be empty. Okay? You don't need to provide this one. Okay? And if it is, uh, so again, table tool, so in the table tool, uh, here we are reading data from the file, and here I'm reading data from the table. So this is the database table. See, uh, table name. Okay. Okay. So it's a okay. file, file versus DB validation. So this is the Snowflake okay. database actually. Okay, Snowflake, uh, the cloud is Snowflake database. Okay. So and then we provide. So this is constant. This this structure is constant across the different tables. Only values will, will get changed. So in, for every table validation, you have to create config YML file, schema JSON file, it is applicable, and test uh, table, uh, the test file, and then transformation SQL if it is applicable. So if you need transformation query, just write your transformation query. If you don't need, just keep empty file here. But the structure should be constant across the different validations. Okay. So uh, 
Uh, and now you might be having questions. So let me go back to this architecture. See, so we, we have discussed YML file uh, is used to define your source target configuration, JSON file to create the schema of your files, and SQL to provide your transformation SQL for your scripts. Okay? And then test files. Okay? These are the important files in the PyTest framework. Okay? This is the test file. So test table 11, test table 12. So if I open test table 11, so here you write what kind of validations you need to perform on test table 11. Okay? So count check, duplicate check, okay? null check, and uniqueness check, and then data compare check, okay? and then schema check. Okay? So in each of the test case, we have written um, assert. Okay? In the assert, we are calling count check library, okay? duplicate check library, null check library, okay? unique, unique check library. So PyTest will take some fixtures. So these are the fixtures we have written. So if I go back to, if I go to the read data, right? So here we return port to read data from the different data sources by using your configuration file. Okay, we are reading config data. And then we are checking whether it's a Python file or SQL file. And then we, we read data from the different files and different data sources, basically. So here see, for CSV, we return the code. For JSON, we have written the code. Uh, and then for Parquet, we have written the code. Our file, we have written the code. So TXT file, we, we have written the code. Okay. So these files can be anywhere, guys. It can be in the local server. It can be in the, uh, you might be working on uh, Azure Cloud or maybe AWS Cloud, right? So this framework can be used for any cloud platform. Okay? There is no limitation at all. Okay? So yeah, so now let me run and show you how framework will get executed. So I'm going to run two files now, test table 11 and test table 12. So to run PyTest, we have to use this command. So there are multiple approaches to run PyTest uh, code. So this is one of the approach. We can also create a runner file and then we can run, but let me explain with this uh, command, okay? So PyTest, and then I want to run table 12 and table 11 validations. So let me run this, okay? So table 11 is having six test cases. We already see. So these are the six test cases. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay? So all six test cases from the table 11, six more test cases from the table 12 will get executed now. And then we'll return as one file. See, now it has collected two items. That means 12 test cases. And it start executing one by one. The file versus file will get validated now. And then file versus DB also will get validated. Okay. So maybe in the interest of time, uh, let me show you the previous report that was generated, uh, right? So I think this was generated. 0320. Let me open this. Okay. So, uh, so you will find using any design pattern or object oriented programming index? No, no, no. We are not using any whoops concept, but I'll cover whoops concepts in this training. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll come to that part. Yeah, yeah I'll come okay, to that okay. uh, curriculum part. Uh, just let me uh, explain this complete uh, framework implementation and then we'll go to the topics that I'm going to cover in this training. Okay. So total 12 test cases are executed now. Nine failed, three passed. Okay. You can see uh, this is the report that is generated now. Yeah, 2022, sorry, 2203, 2025. Okay. Let me open this. Okay. You can observe now count check is passed, duplicate check also passed. So null check failed. Okay. So null check failed on the middle initial column. I'm just validating if there are any null values. There are null values, it is displayed 11 records of the null record. Okay. And also displays the sample data as well. It's the sample data. Identify one. This is the primary key in the table or the file. Uh, this has having some null values. You can also observe. So I identify one. This is the entire record, guys. Okay. So we say it's a middle initial is null, right? So it displays middle initial is null. Let me show you. See, middle initial is null. Okay. It's not just displays the number of uh, failures, it also displays sample records. So unique net check, there are uh, failures in the unique net check. So it is displaying identified zero, having zero duplicates, but surname is having three duplicates. Okay. Data compare pass, no issues with the data compare. And then schema check. So this is the first uh, table 12 validation. So table 11 validation of this, okay? uh, maybe I need to add some additional line support just to segregate which one, which one is for what. 
but this is a table level validation so their count is fail so if count is fail it will not just display it will not just display the fail okay? it will also display why it is fail uh, what records extra in the source what records extra in the target see records only in the source uh, it's a fail so count to because two records are extra in the source which are not present in the target see identifier level identifier 14 or extra in the source same way in the target there are five extra records these five records are not present in the source so displays the actual keys okay all five records so by which we can tell okay maybe these records are missing in the source uh, missing in the target and then we can analyze whether it's a correct or not and then we can revise a bug and we don't need to go and run the queries manually so already these queries are executed and displayed the proper output so you can just see this nine record why it is missing Okay. Small analysis is required just to report the bug. Okay. Likewise, it will do for all validation stuff. Okay. So now this is just a high level summary. But if you observe right, if there is any failure, it will also display why it is failed. For example, let me show you. Uh, so this is the failure on the primary seat number. Okay. So on the identifier nine, okay, source primary key is null value. Target is having nine slash five seventy four. A fail. Okay, so it is also able to display where exactly the failure is, in which column, which row has the issue. So identify nine is the key column. On this key column, source state number is none, but target is having nine slash five seventy four. And then same way. Let me show you one more column where not. Yeah. So if you observe right, the zip code column. So I wantedly made these changes here just to show you how this framework will work. So in the identifier column, uh, it is having uh, the the key is three. So it has source zip code is 43534, but target is having 560045. It's clearly able to distinguish where exactly the issue is, which row has the issue. We don't need to write source minus target, target minus source, and then display, and then go and verify each column where in which column the issue is. So this will display the exact issue for your data. Likewise for all columns. See, see null, null, we cannot compare it. That's why I say nine, null here in the source, but in the target is the balan. See, there is one more record, city previous column. Uh, it is two in the identifier, uh, identifier two, city uh, previous source is at test, and then target city previous is up and the book. Just getting it, how detailed it is uh, displaying the output. Yes. So even if you want to see manually, right, let me show you, uh, we are comparing two files, right? Uh, this file and this file, okay, underscore less underscore t. So we can also observe uh, uh, two, uh, identify two, this identify two. Maybe it is very difficult to navigate, uh, but uh, somewhere you will find, see, a test here. Okay, the same if you compare in the target, you will see some different value on the top. Okay, so that's how it will display the output. So not only this, even uh, so let me show you the schema validation also. See when it is doing schema validation, right? Source column is identified, target column is also identified, uh, and then see data type is mismatch here. So in the source data, it is a begin, but in the target, it is integer type. Okay. So if column is not present in the source or present in the target, it will also display with the null here. But right now, all columns are matching, but uh, data type is mismatch, so it is able to clearly identify what is the issue with the data type also. Begin in the source, in the target, it is integer type. Guess clear how framework will work. Yes, uh, this this will uh, this runs on PySpark in the backend. Yes, yes, yes. In the backend, it is uh, it uses PySpark data frames. Okay, okay. And that is on cloud or is it uh, on? Right now, it is hosted in the local. I am using local PySpark, but we can post this uh, in the okay. GitHub CI/CD. And then we can run from the GitHub runners, or we can run from the database environment. Okay. 